Um, Andrew. Hi. Hi. Thanks for talking to us. Um, I just want to ask you a couple of questions, if I may. Um, you're HIV positive. Yeah, that's Can right. you tell me um, just how did you find out you were HIV positive? Um, a, couple of, a couple of years ago, um, I got quite ill um, over Christmas period. Um, I didn't actually do anything about it at the time. Uh, I left it to go for months and months on end. Um, and then I ended up with um, thrush, um, oral thrush, which obviously was diagnosed at a hospital. And as a result of that, they advised that that could be a symptom of HIV and that it was quite important that I get myself tested for it. Um, they were automatically going to test me at the hospital through it, but I was advised against that, um, which was when I came through to Heartlands to have a HIV test there. Okay. And you said that you were unwell in the, in, you know, at the Christmas time. Can you just mm -hmm. tell me what kind of symptoms did you have? Um, I couldn't swallow. Um, I had a sore throat to start with. I just thought it was a bit of tonsillitis, which is what I was told, and I was sent away with antibiotics. And then as sort of time went on, um, swallowing food became difficult to the point that I couldn't even swallow liquids. Um, and then obviously as a result of that, I was passing out through dehydration, so... So you were really quite sick? I was quite ill. Okay. Um, and when you first got diagnosed, what, what went through your mind? To be honest, I'd had an inkling anyway. Um, somebody had accidentally let something slip at the hospital, that that's what it could be before I'd even had an idea. So I'd had some time to get used to the idea of it. Um, my mum is from a medical background as well, and she was quite supportive and, and, and sort of explained a lot about it anyway. So other than really the ultimate shock of thinking, oh, you know, I could potentially have AIDS or HIV, um, to be fair, I think, um, having looked at it, looking back on it now, um, it wasn't as scary a thought as I thought it was going to be. Um, you know, knowing that there are, there are ways to move forward with it. Did you have friends who were HIV positive? Yeah. Um, I'd had a partner for, for a year and a half who was HIV positive, and obviously I'd seen how it affected him um, in a day-to-day -day basis. He was had a very positive mental attitude about it as well. So from that point of view, it meant that for me, you know, it wasn't too much of a scary experience. Sure. Have you, had any, have you had any bad experiences of people who died? Um, no. no, not through HIV. And do you think that's because you've been diagnosed relatively recently, um, whereas in the early days there wasn't effective treatment around, and so um, you know that a lot of people you know died in the early days, but now HIV is seen in a very much a different way. I mean, are you very positive about? Being HIV positive. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, it, it's not, I don't look at it as a negative thing. Um, you know, it's just part of my life, as is a lot of other aspects. Um, so you're at work? Yes, well, I'm not working at the moment, but I do voluntary work. Okay. Um, you know, I, do, I deal day in, day out with people with HIV um, who also have very positive outlooks on it. Um, obviously, as, as you mentioned, the, uh, the treatments now and the regimes means that obviously you can go many, many years um, without even having problems. Um, so again, it, it, it's not something that I look at as a, as a negative. Mm. There, is, there is really quite a lot of stigma, though, still associated with HIV and AIDS. Can you talk to that at all? I've had no experiences, um, uh, bad experiences of, of stigma towards HIV. Um, you know, I, I understand it's out there and I understand that it can affect people in lots of different ways. Um, I also understand that people from different cultures, etc., um, can find it difficult. But for myself, I've had no experiences, bad experiences, um, as a result of being HIV. Right. Can I ask you, um, do you see, are you surprised if I was to tell you that the rates of HIV in Birmingham and the West Midlands have continued to rise year on year since 2001? I'm not surprised. Um, I think there's a lot more awareness now and I think um, people are generally looking more at their sexual health now, which I don't know whether that contributes to the rise or whether it's just because generally HIV is on the increase. Um, but I'm not overly surprised that there is an increase. Do you have, do you have friends or are aware of um, people that are taking what you would believe to be unnecessary risks? I do. 
Um, and I think that's probably contributing to an increase. Um, I think until people realise suddenly that they are HIV, that then they suddenly look at their, their own sexual health, um, as is the case with myself. So, would you advise um, you know, young people now to go forward and get tested? I think it should be promoted in, in all areas. Um, I think it should be part of general sexual health checkups. Um, people should be made aware that it's not a scary a, a trip or, uh, to the hospital. Um, and I would certainly advise, and I still do advise people that I know, that really should just do it as part of your, your own sexual health. Do you think that, I know that people still think that doing an HIV test or taking an HIV test is, uh, is a very special thing to do. Uh, and the medical profession, we're trying very much to normalise taking HIV tests. Do you think that you know, GPs, hospital doctors in general are comfortable in offering HIV tests? I personally don't think they would be, um, simply from the fact that um, I think it's an area that they're not used to dealing with. Um, there are specialist clinics um, around that deal with it that make it a very easy process. Um, and it's not difficult and it's easy and there is the support as well there, whether it's a HIV positive or HIV negative result. Okay. So, your, so really your outlook on life now, being positive, is very positive. No, totally, totally. It's not, it's not a part of my life. It is a part of my life, but it doesn't control my life. Um, there's a lot more to me than my status. Um, and I do think that has a lot to do with your own well-being as well. Um, admittedly, it affects people in different ways, um, but it doesn't control, control my life. How do you think we could encourage more people to get tested? Wow, the million dollar question. Um, I personally think that unless you just literally get people to frog march them into hospitals, I don't know whether that will happen. I mean, you can only do so much. You can only educate. You can only um, talk to people so much. People just need to be more aware, I think, of HIV in itself um, and aware that it's not, it's not a killer necessarily these days. Um, but the things can happen before then. So. You know, the, the best way forward is just continual education, as far as I'm concerned, um, telling people. OK. Um, let me ask you about, I don't know if you've heard of um, Pepsi or post-exposure prophylaxis after sexual um, exposure. Um, what do you think about that? And what do you think about um, how people out on the scene are, how they're using that? From a gay person's um, perspective, I think at the moment PEP is very much considered morning after pill for, for people if they feel they've been exposed, which in its own right potentially it's there to, to hopefully stop it going any further. Um, I think there's a common misconception at the moment though that it is a very easy way out to somebody to have uh, unprotected sex knowing that there's an easy way to, to, to potentially deal with the problem. Um, which obviously it's not. And um, have you any experience of people who've taken PEP, who've sure. taken the drugs? And yeah. Perhaps you could tell me about that. Yeah, I, I mean, I have known people that have done it, um, and only one, and they've done it once, and that was an eye-opener enough for them. I mean, it's a very strong course of anti-HIV medication, which made them very ill, um, which pretty much put them off it and made them again look at you know, the, their own sexual health and, uh, and hopefully they wouldn't put themselves in that position again. So condom was infinitely better than uh, a mixed course of uh, totally agree. potentially yes. toxic drugs. And not only that, if ever you were to develop HIV in the future, there's the potential of building up a resistance to the medication anyway by overusing PEP. So. Thank you very much indeed for talking to us. You're welcome.